going to show you an easy way how to separate a room or to create a wall using metal studs and tracks. Hi, welcome back to our channel, Half Eye Bucks. I'm Rory. So we had this big space and we wanted to separate it. So we wanted to define the different areas. So we decided we have a bathroom. This is our water closet. And this is our toast closet. And uh, instead of using concrete like this, what we decided to do was to use drywall track and studs or metal frame. For this part of the project, the material that we need, track, studs, screws, we need some 2x4 for support, drill, the metal, scissors, our utility knife to cut and snip the, the drywall studs and track. And we also need concrete screws to affix it. We also use nail, a nail gun because we're going into porcelain tile and we did not have a part yet. So you need a diamond bit to go to drill the hole into the tile to affix the screws. The difference between a truck and a stud is that the stud fits inside of the truck. So typically, the truck sits on the ground or in the ceiling. And then the stud you can see is a little bit narrow, so it fits inside of the truck. If you have both of them side by side, an easy way to differentiate is that studs typically have a hole in it and the holes are for, for running cables or utility wires. We utilize two different types of track and stud for this project. Uh, primarily, we use a two and a half inch and then we have the inch and five inch over here, which is narrow, right here. There's also the three and a half inch that you could use, which is a bit wider, but I think the two and a half is, is pretty good in terms of the strength and because the ceilings are so tall. The process that we use is ensure that you have your, your dimensions or your layout. And you're gonna start with the track. So the first one that we laid down was this track right here. And what we did is we tried to figure out how can we get it straight. I have a laser level, but it's not working. And an easy way to, to define what is straight is you can actually go based on the tile. So if you follow the growth lines in the tile, hopefully you had a good tile and they would have already ensured that the room is square and straight. The measurements, six inches or five and three quarter from the edge of this track to this growth line and you can follow that right over. Another easy way is that you could use a chalk line. So you could string a line from here to over there and you could mark it from. So we measured the length of the track, which was five feet. I think it was five and a half. Yeah, five and a half feet. And once we place this track on the ground, we then put up a stud. So a tip again, if you're drilling into porcelain, find a grow line and try to drill a hole in the grow line. You can't find a grow line for all of them depending on how this is laid out. So I had to get a different blade, drill bit, which is not diamond, but it can cut glass. And I use it to drill, pre-drill the hole, and then I use a regular bit afterwards. So once the track is done, we we'll then need to put the stud. And I always recommend starting with the stud that is going to be on the wall. You measure from the base of the track to the height of the ceiling, and then you cut your, your track. Tip for cutting is you don't have to be exact in terms of the measurement from the base of the track to the ceiling. So because it's metal, you can have a little wiggle room in terms of space, and that makes it easier for you to move them when you're going to align it. Once we have this up, then we wanted to work out the spacing of the other studs. Our next step is that you can start with the end, the other end. So I would have put up this track, this stud. And when you put up this stud, you want to ensure that you connect the upper track at the same time. So that's an easy way to install it. 
So you will lead it into that one and affix this stud to that track. And then once this is level, then everything should be level. Then you can focus on the internals. So they are, they are a little wobbly now, but it gets the full strength once the drywall is affixed to them. And um, you can see in this side, we put additional reinforcements. So these reinforcements is because of who is going to come here. And we use both two wide fours and we also use track to add that support. There are different spacing that you can use. Because we're going to be putting tile on the wall or on this side, and it's going to be a cement board or a concrete board, it is very heavy. You want to ensure that the space in it is as close as possible. So we use 16 inches between each of our stud. And the 16 inches is on center. So when I say on center, it means from the middle of this stud to the middle of this stud should be roughly around 16 inches. You could also go two feet apart. So the first one could be at the two foot mark, which would be around here. You can save on material, but again, because we know that there's going to be a lot of weight, so we wanted to use a 16 inches separation. And because there's going to be huge tiles on it, so it ensures that there's no twisting of the, the drywall once it's, it's put. So to put up straight walls are pretty simple. However, the more complicated one is when you're dealing with the corners. And I've seen different drywall persons install the corners differently. One of the recommended ways is to ensure that the drywall that you're putting up, so you would, you would put this wall up regularly, but when you're turning the, the wall, you want to leave a space for the drywall to fit in between it. And what will happen is that the drywall, instead of stopping at the edge, it would come right through to the back of the wall down here. So you can see we left half an inch space. So once the drywall comes into here, it would clamp it and it would ensure that it is extremely solid. And this would also ensure overlapping. So remember, we we'll run a drywall here and then a drywall would run around here also. So it's recommended to have this, this overlap or this gap to ensure that corners is as solid as possible. Because you wouldn't have wanted to screw this to the same corner. And even though this corner is solid because of the, the blocks or the blocking, because we did use the two by four here again, because we are going to have this as a door jump. So in all instances, our door is going to be 30 inches. But you have to accommodate for the jam itself which we're going to be using two by four lumbo. You measure exactly an inch and a half. So you want to put the inch and a half on both sides. So this width is actually 33 inches. Talk about a 30 inch door. All right, so you have two, typically two recommended ways to join a track or overhead support, which this is a different way. So you, you find an angle, typically 45 degrees, and you slip the edge, so you can see that there's an angle here, and you bend the lower part on them. And what this allows is that you have two different screwing points. So you have one at the top and one down there. The other way is that you could have cut the drywall straight here and just have this coming on them. But with this way, you only have one screwing point. Because we're going to have the two by four fixed up here, I think this offers you more support and more strength because it's supported at the lower part of that. Placement of the electrical is very important when you're doing the drywall or when you're putting up the metal studs on the frame. So we only have a light switch in these studs. The one is going to be one over there. What's, what's important is that you need to measure the height that you want the light switch and then you need to put some support for it to mount it on. So we're going to need to mount it on the track that we use here. So you screw the box onto the track and you want to ensure that it's firm. This is pretty firm and if you want, you can leave a little more support. You don't want a case where you're turning on the light switch and the, the box pushes through the drywall. So we're complete with most of the frame in here and it's very important that you have a, a solid base, a solid structure because we're moving on to installing the actual drywall. 